Hey guys, so welcome again to my live stream. Um, my name is Sherman uh, Wei Zi, right? So most people who can't exactly pronounce my name properly would just call me Sherman. That's my English name. Uh, anyway, welcome to my live stream. Um, this is the Death to Design series. This is episode 3 of my live stream. So I've already done the first one on Monday, the second one on Wednesday. And honestly, after Wednesday, it feels like I finally got the hang of it and things are looking good. You know, they are sounding good too, uh, which is what I like. So today, I, uh, before I get into everything, I just want to share with you what it's like, you know, when I'm doing my usual usual deep dive, you know, like uh, long before we had all this kind of live stream and stuff. Um, this is, you know, years ago, you know, as a developer, every time after work or after a long week, uh, when I come back home and I would be really excited and looking forward to uh, learning more about the different Telerik products or the different controls that I'm using. Um, so this is what I usually do. I would have a fruit. For me, I, I kind of like bananas. Uh, I like other fruits too, but yeah, this is just something that I bought earlier today. So banana, I got some, I got a couple of um, sour gummies, you know, like gummy candy, but they, they, they are sour. <laughs> So I like those with the sour taste because um, every time when I'm when I'm doing a deep dive, especially at night, I love I love doing deep dives at night because nighttime is when it's all quiet, peaceful. Um, it's the best time for me to think. It's the best time for me to work problems, you know. Um, and also, it's it's usually the time when my creative juices flow so this is why i i always do a deep dive into anything you know whatever i want to learn um i'll do it at night no disturbance peace and quiet all right so so yeah you know a banana so i can eat it later while i do my live stream while, while when i'm trying to think uh, when i'm going through the examples um, from the documentation so on Wednesday, I managed to cover three different filtering functionalities for the data grid. All right, so it was really good. I accept, you know, when I finally got to the external filter example, and then for some reason I got distracted because I was slipping into the sort of the go through the motion mode of uh, you know like doing a live stream and, and, and trying to do a deep dive at the same time. So I got distracted, I, I made some typo error somewhere <laughs> and then I didn't know where the problem was so I was looking through the code for 5 minutes but I still couldn't find the problem so I had to end up copy and paste the code you know uh, to, to get it to work. So something that I mentioned in my live stream um, uh, in, in the previous episode is that Whenever I do a deep dive, I like to take my time. You know, I I don't like to go through the motion. I don't like to rush through. And yes, I always avoid, you know, like copy and paste the whole example. You know, I don't do that. Uh, I only do that for like, maybe if there is certain kind of uh, styles that is included as part of the example, or if there is like uh, sample data. Right, so those are the things that I will copy and paste but everything else from the examples that I'm learning from I would just type it out so just like the previous two live streams so far you know when you watch this live stream as I go through the examples you're gonna see me type everything nearly everything out you know as I go but a good, good thing is that you know um, instead of trying to create individual projects for each example uh, what i've done is that i have sort of compiled them into a project hang on let me let me 
switch over. Okay, so what I did is for each example, I would just put them into a single component, right? A single folder. So it's a lot easier for me as a, a, a developer to, to kind of go back and refer to the examples. You know, say if I'm working on a project, which I'm not right now, but let's say I have an active project right now that requires the use of the data grid control from Kendo VI. Then I can open up this folder, uh, this project, and I can then refer to the examples that I need to, you know, so rather than creating individual uh, individual React projects, which is just redundant. So this way, you know, um, I, I think I would also recommend using this method for any other developers. You know, if you are thinking about doing a deep dive into anything, anything that you want to learn, there are there are the work hard ways of learning and then there is a work smart way of learning so i i always say that i'm a lazy developer so i just prefer to uh you know yeah do it this way rather than create individual projects okay so today i'm just going to continue um there are actually three more examples for learning about filters oh yes very important before i continue um I need to share an update. So after this week's live streams, I've realized that trying to allocate 90 minutes for a deep dive session is just not enough time. Um, so starting from Monday, I'm going to extend the live stream to two hours instead because um, I don't want something that is three, four hours long because nobody has that kind of attention span. And 90 minutes just doesn't feel very productive on my part so I feel like I can do more so so yeah I think two hours would be the sort of the ideal um, amount of time to do this live stream so I can at least cover more ground um, otherwise I'm going to need quite a number of episodes to finish doing a deep dive into the data grid because like I said before and in my um, article series for Dev to, Dev to Design uh, the data grid itself is one of the most versatile and powerful uh, controls that the Telerik team has ever created. Regardless of which product you're using in, in Telerik, if the product has a grid control in it, you can know that you can know that it is it is a really really good control. Right? You can do a lot of things with it. Um, so in that sense, it's really powerful as well. All right, so getting used to switching, you know, the, the scenes uh, in OBS. <laughs> um, so it, it, it will take me a little while to get used to this, but I'm going to start. Also, another thing that I always like to do is if I'm working on a similar example, this is one of the reasons why I love Telerik's um, demos, you know, product demos, because um, at the end of the day, they are sort of using the same sample data for every single sort of feature and functionality that they are trying to explain. So as a developer, it's very easy, you know, in such a scenario whereby I can literally, you know, name it the same thing. Right, product script for the different example. So when it comes to app.js, you know, I don't really have to change anything. I just have to change the import URL, right? So makes it makes my life a lot easier as a, a developer. So it's one of the reasons why I've coined it a number of times before that um, Telerik's um, online learning experience, the, the online learning experience for developers it's one of the most powerful reasons why Telerik is so popular today. 
and used by so many developers all, all over the world. Like I say, I, I don't like to copy and paste. So sometimes if I see something and I feel like I want to um, use a different name, you know, I'll just change accordingly. So I thought using index.jsx would be better. That way, you know, like when I want to import it, I don't have to actually type the file name. Yep. So where there are instances like this. Oh, hang on a second. When there are instances, oops, you've been looking at a different screen. Huh, whoops, sorry. Okay, so. <laughs> if you have been looking at stuff like this, instances like this, I would actually still type them out one by one. I mean, I'll go line by line, but I will type them out because I find that that way I can learn more. Yeah. So apparently the shortcut key for toggling the scenes uh, is clashing with my VS code. So I'm going to have to change that. Hopefully it won't clash with 
Let me try it again. <laughs> Wait, what what scene are you looking at? Okay, let's change. Okay, nice. Okay, let's switch it back. All right.
Oh, I love the gummy. Oh, I forgot the X Nice. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Let's continue. So this is a pretty straightforward example. Custom filter cell. Filter cell property. I see something weird. There is this like a button here. Mm -mm. Oh, it's called clear, but there's nothing there. So apparently, there's supposed to be something there. <laughs> oh, we'll look at the code in a bit. Figure out why there's nothing there. Custom filter cell. So. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so we need a couple of things. So we're gonna write some. I'm gonna need to write like uh, separate files, separate components. So I'm just gonna type in the rest first.
So as I'm typing this right now in my mind, I'm trying to remind myself, don't rush, don't rush. <laughs> because if I rush through it, um, it's very easy for me to make the same mistake of having a typo error and then not know where the typo error is. I mean, if the typo error is causing some sort of obvious uh, issue, it's usually much easier to identify, right? But if it's like a single letter somewhere, <laughs> um, that, that becomes very, very difficult to identify. Yeah, so I'm going to type slowly and deliberately.
What does it look like? It's repeating. Huh. So I should probably post this question to the, the team that works on the documentation. Hey guys, if you're watching this, um, why is the classes, uh, let me switch the screen. Why the CSS classes for this button like repeated? But uh, I think it's probably an error. Maybe someone is trying to like uh, type really fast and then um, yeah, maybe. So I'm going to take that. I'm just going to copy the non-repetitive uh, items. something from earlier let's keep a handle Okay, so that's one filter component down.
I think I see the problem. The icon is pointing to something that doesn't exist. Um, I'm just going to check out documentation for a while. So I see that they have um, this library. So let's see what we can find in this library. We have a clear. So, SVG icon. So perhaps the example on on the website that's using this, um, maybe we can change it because I think it's a error in the, the it's an error in itself. So. This should fix that problem that we saw on the website earlier.
quatre. Ah, we infilt ourselves. Some error there. See, that's the problem when I make a mistake. <laughs> and I have to figure out what went wrong. Okay, this one was more obvious than, yeah, so that wasn't as difficult to identify. Nice! So you see, I figured out the, the problem with the demo's uh, button. You know, there's no icon, right? So I managed to figure it out. Just have to use the SVG icon um, component. Problem solved. <laughs> oh man, I love this. Awesome. Okay. I think I earned a break. So earlier today I was working on a personal project of mine and it's been a couple of years since I wrote any web API, you know, uh, using Node.js, JavaScript and Ex Express, Express.js. So it's been a couple of years, so I had to go online, Google and and follow some tutorial online and to figure it out. Um, maybe five years ago, you know, this would have become a second nature thing. Like, you know, I could do it at the back of my, I can do it when I'm sleeping. <laughs> but the fact that I haven't written any web APIs uh, for that many years, you know, I'm rusty right now. But it's totally coming back to me. Um, so the personal project, uh, it's just something I'm working on. I'm not ready to talk about it yet, to share it publicly, um, because I feel that only when there is substantial results, progress, then um, I, I think once there's something, once there is something to show for, you know, then I'll share it publicly. I'm just looking at the next uh, example. I'm just checking my sample data. Just have to make sure it's the correct one. Otherwise, I'll need to copy and paste again. I will be right back.
Okay, so I believe this is the final example uh, for the filtering feature uh, or filtering functionality for the data grid. So after this, uh, I can decide like, you know, which, uh, which section I want to go to next, you know. So there are a couple of things I want to deep dive into, obviously, the most basic ones, um, crude, right? So managing the data in the data grid. Um, I've already done sorting. Now I'm about to finish filtering. So there's uh, paging, there is grouping, um, and I believe there are a lot of other very, very cool stuff that I can go through as well. So there's no rush. So like I say, um, starting from next Monday onwards, I will be extending my live stream for another 30 minutes. So make it two hours. So it'll be two hours of awesome tinkering with the data grid control. All right, okay, let's get back to my deep dive.
So if you happen to just join my live stream for today, I'm currently going through the final filtering example um, for Candle React's data grid. It's actually the custom filter operator's uh, example. So I'm just running through it now before I move on to the other sections um, of the data grid. Hey Tindo. <laughs> Horrible coding font. This is actually my favorite coding font. Uh, this is Cartograph CF. I paid for it by the way. Um, yeah, I, I did not download this illegally. I actually paid for the font. So it's Cartograph CF. So it is it's a very nice font with um, italic and what, what's that word leakages yeah so um yeah actually i i love this font this is like my favorite font right now i've been using it for more than a year actually By the way, thank you so much for being a part of my live stream. You know, I, I appreciate the company. <laughs> I know, yeah, when I say it like that, it sounds a little sad. <laughs> but I am actually building something from scratch. Dev to design is something new, so uh, it, it suddenly adheres to a different kind of crowd, or different, different kind of audience, you know. So 
whatever followers I had in the past on YouTube, you know, they were only interested in a different kind of content. So, um, so technically, yeah, you know, I, I am actually building from scratch again. But I am excited because I, I think that the timing of it all is perfect in a sense because uh, with the progress uh, champions recognition with the Telerik products with um, the know-how and, and the, the understanding of how live streaming works you know if this was five years ago I probably would be struggling to kind of manage this whole live stream thing but the fact that I've been trying to jump on a bandwagon for the last couple of years um, you know I I tried for a while and then I abandoned the, the effort and then I tried again I abandoned the effort again and then um, so I, I I will say that I've tried and failed a few times at least um, since I tried to get into live streaming a few years ago so I finally walked away from creating content and live streaming two years ago in 2022 so I made a video on my YouTube channel. I said, you know, I won't be, I won't be uploading content for a while, and then I, I went away and, and and you know I, I have other things that I have to deal with, uh, in my life. So I say it's all about the timing. Um, everything that is happening right now is happening for a reason, and it's just like I say, it's timely. So I'm glad you know to be able to do it right now. Yeah, you know, of course, I'll be more than happy to talk to you guys, you know. Yep, I'm back after two years. And yeah, I'm more than happy to, you know, think about Death to Design. Uh, if you were to go and watch my previous live streams, um, or if you go and read my articles on LinkedIn, I did talk about, like, why I started Death to Design. Death to Design is in a way uh, uh, the perfect um, description of my journey as a front-end developer and how I because of my passion and my belief in UX you know long before we call it UX this was in the mid 2000s so I, I back then I believed that UX was really important but as a software developer I couldn't get to design right I couldn't transition there were no opportunities so the closest thing I could do to practicing we call it UX today but usability design so the closest thing I could do to get to that was to focus on front-end development CSS HTML uh, learning Photoshop um, and, and being really good in JavaScript jQuery uh, you know ASP.NET Ajax so I was really focused on all of that, you know. At the same time, you know, because of my job, um, I'm still a generic software developer during that time. But every chance I got, I would try to hone in on the front end side of things, right? So this was many years before we recognized front end developers for who they are or what they can do. So today, I, I kind of consider myself as one of the pioneers in front end development. I've been doing it long before everybody else call it that anyway. So, oh, you are back ended. Okay, that's cool. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, it depends. I mean, if you are back ender, you could be working on important things like firmware and and uh, back end service uh, kind services kind of stuff. You know, stuff that I'm I will never be able to do. <laughs> I mean, I can't say that I will never be able to do. I can probably do it. But it will require a lot of effort on my part, and I, I, I just I just don't think it's worth the time and energy. So it's been, for me, it would just be better spent creating really nice, really uh, good UX uh, front end front end stuff. So that's where I'm gonna focus my effort. All right, so let me just run this.
Woohoo! Nice! Oh man, tinkering with uh, Tarik products is always like the thing that makes me the most happy, you know, like like I know it's maybe it kind of sounds weird to some people, but but you know when when I was working as a software developer, ever since the day I I discovered Telerik, you know, in two thousand and six, you know, almost almost not every day, but almost every day, or you know, kind of like every weekend when I get back from a, a really stressful day or a really stressful week, the one thing that I'm always looking forward to was tinkering with. Telerix products, so it, it's it's not strange that um, after following Telerix products for almost a decade, then I was among the first batch of developer experts to be recognized by by Telerix Progress Progress Telerix. So that was around the time that the company got acquired. So then they headhunted me, and I worked as a Telerik evangelist for for about fifteen months before the company restructured. So unfortunately, you know, I, I always told recruiters this when they ask, you know, like if the company, if Progress had not restructured in twenty seventeen, I would never have left the company. <laughs> I'll probably still be there working as a evangelist right now. Um, but anyway, things happen for a reason. So. Um, so yeah, I I've been recognized as, uh, like the, okay, probably not now because you know like I I, I stopped for a few years so now I'm kind of like, refreshing and and learning some of the new stuff that has been added, but back then when I was still working at Progress as a Telerik evangelist, um, my colleagues, former colleagues, gave me the nickname, the Telerik guy. So, the Telerik guy. That's why my, um, what is that? My folder name for, you know, this this whole everything that I'm storing my code in for the live stream, is TTG dash Kendoria, TTG which is the Telerik guy. <laughs> so the the nickname that my former colleague gave me just kind of stuck. Hmm. Sorry, I get very carried away when I'm talking about Telerik. So, yeah, it's kind of like my, it's the one thing that you know I'm I'm super super passionate about. Now I I do I am passionate about a couple of other things as well. There are a couple of other brands and products that uh, I have represented, being brand ambassador and so on. But I think in terms of um, development, software development, um, kind of products. The one product that I have supported the longest is Telerik, so it's uh, eighteen years and four months and counting. <laughs> <laughs> so eh, okay, yeah. So uh, let's see. Oh, we got about eight minutes left. I, but I, I haven't had enough. So, <laughs> so I'm thinking, you know, since I already finished the the, the filtering section, I want to continue. So maybe I'll just pick another section and do one more, one more example before I, I call it a night. So yeah. Cool, cool. You know I, uh, before I was even um, hit hunted by Telerik or before long before I was recognized as a developer expert, uh, I have been blogging a lot, but. The interesting thing was, um, I spent many years blogging. I spent many years writing technical tutorials online, um, but I was never like you know into that whole SEO thing. I, I didn't know. I didn't really know how to check if uh, people were kind of reading the article. Um, I do know that people comment from time to time on what I write, but I I never really had this sense of like the visibility of like. You know how popular my, my article was or how many people have read it how many hits so there was a long time that I, I was kind of writing all this stuff uh, technically a bit like outreach you know I'm, I'm just sharing about what I love um, so yeah so interestingly in uh, late 2014 when uh, John Bristol yeah, he's one of our progress champions right John Bristol, he was working in progress at the time. 
he was the one that kind of brought me into the fold. He was the one that offered me to be a developer expert as part of the developer expert program at the time. So um, when that happened, I remember talking to some of the former staff, the former members on the team, like, you know, um, you know how, how did you know about me, you know? And then uh, one of them mentioned something that totally caught me by surprise. They say that they had their eye on me for quite a while. So apparently the articles that I used to be writing about Telerate, you know, that I thought nobody was really noticing, turns out they were noticing it. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, you know, I, I realized that, you know, all this, um, all this thing that I'm doing right now, you know, I still love to write, you know, in fact, I, I explained this clearly in my live, previous live stream and in my article, previous article, that um, this whole live stream is not my main focus. This live stream is just a gateway to get uh, my target audiences to my articles because at the end of the day, I, I know my strength, you know. Sure, I, I can be pretty good at making technical video tutorials. You know, I, I can be pretty good at that. But I also find that it uses a lot of energy, <laughs> a lot of time and a lot of effort. I'd love to do it. It's satisfying. But, you know, between making videos or live streams versus writing great articles, I find that my, my effort is just better spent writing great articles. So that is what I'm trying to do right now. I'm only doing this live stream and, and making videos because I I have to acknowledge and recognize that there are target audiences who prefer watching videos than than reading a lengthy article. So <laughs> so yeah, so that, that this is where I am right now. Alright, so filter is done. I'm gonna just Yeah, um, in terms of writing, that's my area of strength. Um, people I have worked with before, people that I have interacted with when I travel to uh, conferences and to speaking engagements, um, a lot of them have told me that I am a natural writer, natural technical writer. So I'm very, very good in that area. Kind of like, it feels like it comes naturally. But I think it's also because I've been doing it for so long that it looks like it comes natural to me, but I think I struggled a lot, you know, in the, the early years of writing. So, uh, so yeah, probably not exactly something natural. It's just probably something that I've done for a long time and I got very good. Okay, so I could probably get pretty good at doing technical live streams and, and, and uh, making videos. I mean, making videos, I'm already pretty good not an expert but I'm pretty good in that area you know given more time I could become excellent too but I, I just want to be very focused I, I don't want to uh, spend my energy and effort in places that I'm doing not like a 90 you know like in terms of marks you know like if I'm writing a technical article I it's very easy for, for me to score a distinction you know um, but when it comes to making videos and, and doing a live stream, I'll probably settle for a B or a B plus. <laughs> hmm. The application I'm building. So let me switch over to my switch over to Firefox. I'm gonna go over to my GitHub. So uh, this is a personal project. I, I I don't want to get into too much about it yet, but um, this personal project that I'm working on is private for a reason. Um, it's 
it's like an idea that I had. You know, I I, I wanted to do. It has to do with writing. I'll just say that it has to do with writing. So and it has to do with Telerik uh, and Kendall UI React, Kendall React, uh, and for Angular and jQuery. So uh, there's something that I want to do. Something I'm writing about. This is just a sort of a sample project. So in terms of like when I'm doing the writing, you can think of it as there are chapters, sections, right? So and then within the project that I'm working on, the resource, the technical resource, uh, there will be this uh, project that the target readers can follow along and build. So I've been working on this project um, since you know I started like two weeks ago. So I'm working on the AP, web API portion. Uh, this is why I talk about the back end stuff. You know, like I haven't done a web API for years. You know, so I'm happy that today I finally was able to write my first web API URL in, I think, six years, five years. So yeah, so I was quite happy. So this weekend I plan to. <clears throat> finish up most of the web API for the project so that next week onwards you know I can actually start focusing on the actual writing um, and whatever I'm trying to build using Kendo React so this whole thing is uh, pretty nice because while I'm doing this deep dive right now into the individual functionality of the different components of uh, Kendo React it would help to reinforce what I want to write for my personal project. So yeah, so this is the one. Okay, so so something that I've been thinking about thinking of uh, further organizing my components so that you know it's easier for me to to kind of refer back to them in the future so maybe i can just put everything in filtering Commit the changes. Nice. Oh, I love that, you know, it will automatically refactor the, the code and the import statements so nice I gotta go and change one by one <laughs> yeah no JS the backend is no JS it's, it's what I'm familiar with so uh, I, I posted something on my LinkedIn um, earlier this evening about looking for uh, freelance gigs I'm looking for extra work right now anyway so because I'm trying to earn some extra income which I need right now uh, and as part of my post, I was writing about how, you know, um, some of the skill sets that I have and, and what I'm comfortable with, what I can manage and what I'm good at. So it's just to make things specific and clear to whoever is interested to engage me as a freelancer. So um, obviously my preference is front-end stuff, React, Angular, Telerik. Uh, or even UX prototyping. Um, these are areas that I, I'm passionate about and I'm very good at. Um, but then I also listed uh, like full stack stuff like MERN and MEAN, the MERN stack and the MEAN stack. So 
Man is obviously you know it's supposed to be Mongo, but it could be MySQL, whatever. So Man, uh, which includes ExpressJS, not of course the Node.js platform, uh, and then React, right? Man. So mean obviously is for Angular. So, uh, huh, yeah, freelancing is challenging. So, uh, it's not always easy. Freelancing, you can go for periods of time where you can't find any gigs. <laughs> um, but then there, there are moments when the gigs start coming in and then you can start building up a, a portfolio. I've been doing freelancing for a long time, 18 years as well. But um, there are always ups and downs in the journey. So uh, at the moment, I am kind of uh, going through a down period for my freelancing so I'm looking forward to the the part where <laughs> everything starts going up again okay let, let's just do one more example and then I'll call it a night forgot to change the scene <laughs> sorry that happens <laughs> oh man
Let's run this quick. Cool. All right. Okay, so I think I'm done for tonight. <laughs> um, so thanks a lot, Pindo, for tuning in. I really appreciate the company. I hope I'll, I can see you at my next live stream uh, next Monday. So again, next Monday onwards, uh, all my dev to design live streams will be extended to two hours instead of just 90 minutes. That way, you know, I can... Uh, go through a lot more stuff in my deep dive so yeah it's been fun um, I always love my time thinking with Italian products so again I will start drafting out the sort of like the afterthought article um, for this uh, live stream today and then uh, yeah I'll probably publish it tomorrow after I proofread the article all right Thank you for watching. This is uh, Sherman Atrix. I'm signing off. For some reason, I only saw your messages. Uh, from the OBS chat window but my when I'm watching my own stream from my tablet uh, I don't see some of the messages <laughs> sorry probably it takes a little while to uh, refresh uh, didn't get a t-shirt though very disappointed uh, Yeah, I'm in Asia, uh, Singapore. So, the swag. I know they they uh, Sam asked for my address, my residential address, a couple of weeks ago. I think at the beginning of last month. So I'm not sure, uh, I haven't gotten anything yet, but I'm just going to assume that they are preparing the items and sending it out. So uh, yeah, um, I know it's a bit vain, but I, I'm actually looking forward to the plug. I think that's, they're going to give out a plug, I think. Um, Progress.com slash champions. Is that a plug? I think that's a plug. Digital badger, die cut stickers, trophy. Ah, yeah, see, plugs each year. So, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Because um, being an Asian, 
right? Being an Asian, being a Singaporean, I'm Chinese. I mean, I'm a Singaporean first, but I'm, I am Chinese. Um, to my parents, whatever I do, at the end of the day, there has to be something that they can touch and feel, you know, before they really believe the things that I'm talking about. Ah, it's just a cultural thing. It's stupid. <laughs> I am looking forward to getting the t-shirt. So, you know, it's something I can wear when I'm doing my live stream. So, which is pretty good. Alright, uh, I'm signing off. I'm going to enjoy my evening or the rest of my night. Uh, probably be gaming on my PC for a while. <laughs> and then uh, before I, I, I go to sleep. Alright, thank you so much, Tindo. Um, I will talk to you again. Uh, I will talk to you on, on uh, Slack as well. Alright, ciao.